Hi, I'm Brett Beckman, board certified veterinary dentist. Welcome to the Vet Dental Show. Our veterinary dental practitioner program registration officially is November 12th. On Sunday, we're going to be do a lo- doing a live training at 1030 a.m. Eastern. As podcast listeners only, and this is only for podcast listeners, and this is only for our past wet lab participants the last two times we've done wet labs. If you go to IVDI, ivdi.org slash 2024, we've got something special for you there to secure your spot in the class of 2024. There's only 48 veterinarians that will be able to be in that class. And by securing your spot, you'll also get a considerable discount on your tuition. So again, visit ivdi.org slash 2024 and all the information's there. We hope to see you in that class. Today, we're going to be discussing something that I never thought I'd need to discuss on a podcast. Never thought I'd really have to bring it up in a lab. But we did ask over the last 18 months, the question to our wet lab participants, how many people do subgingival curatage and root planing using a gingival or periodontal curette? And less than half of the people responded positively, which just really surprised me because I thought that was something that all practices did. It was so, such a basic thing. And it's super important because we go to the time and the expense to clean from a preventive standpoint initially with our patients when they're younger in the hospital and polish. And obviously, we get under the gum line when we do that in both cases of cleaning with our ultrasonic scaler and polishing. But the problem is that if we have pockets that are abnormal, we're going to get some bleeding coming from those pockets. We pick that up mainly with our periodontal probe. And that bleeding is an indication that there's an additional procedure that needs to be done. It's not a long procedure. It's not involved, but it's it's super important. And so I want to go over that today. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see some of the instruments, but I am going to explain how to determine how to use the periodontal curette and how to do the root planing and subgingival curatage that we need to do to prevent the progression of periodontal disease beyond what we can see visibly so that it results in the cessation of that pocket from progressing to a deeper pocket when we get that patient back for the next cleaning. So let me put this in perspective. Just visually think of a maxillary canine tooth. And over that canine tooth is some fairly thick gingiva or gum tissue And that gum tissue is attached with periosteum to the bone. If we take a periodontal probe and we place it into that pocket or sulcus, if that pocket's normal, it's not going to bleed. If it's abnormal, it will bleed and it will probably be more than two millimeters deep. And obviously, that depends on the patient size. But if we get that bleeding, there's a reason for it. And that reason is that there's abnormal tissue down in that pocket at its base. And there's abnormal tissue lining that pocket. If we clean with an ultrasonic scaler and we polish and we don't remove that, that inflammatory tissue that has a lot of bacteria involved with it is going to continue to 
move apically and in so doing eventually get to the point where that traverses that bone that covers your root and you start to get bone loss. So if we start, if we progress without some type of intervention with that process, then eventually we're going to get enough bone destruction where we lose the tooth. So we want to prevent that. We want to make that a part of our cleaning regimen in response to abnormal periodontal pockets. And we evaluate those pockets, not necessarily by cleaning, but by using our periodontal probe to measure pockets. Uh, it, but more importantly is if you place that probe in a space between the gum tissue and the tooth, does that tissue bleed? And that granulation tissue has to be removed if it is in that scenario where it, it's bleeding upon probing. So let's look at and visualize a pocket that's five millimeters deep and we place a periodontal probe in there and we get bleeding. The next thing that we need to do is we need to think about incorporating this procedure into our fee sheets. So we call this closed root planing. Not a real good term, but CRP is a is a good initial that you can use for your dental charting. Closed root planing tells us that we went in and we cleaned out that pocket, including the subgingival curatage and the root planing to make it such that we can actually get reattachment of the nice bleeding connective tissue underneath back to the bone and recreate that epithelial barrier and prevent further progression until that granulation tissue has time to reestablish itself, which is months. So looking at our pocket, we need to have an instrument that we can clean that root and we can clean that tissue. And that instrument is the periodontal curette. And that curette has a shaft and then it has a blade at the end of that shaft that's curved. And both ends of the shaft have blades. And there's one cutting edge on that blade. So our job is determine, to determine what is the cutting edge on that blade. How do we figure out what, which, which uh, side of that blade will cut and can be used against the gum tissue for the curatage and can be used against the root for root planting. So visualize taking that straight instrument, putting it straight up and down, looking at it and having the toe of that instrument or the sharp tip of that instrument facing you. So the instrument's vertical, straight up and down, you're holding it in front of your face. And if you look closely at that blade, you're gonna see that one of the surfaces of that blade is lower to the horizontal plane or that angulation has a lower side of that blade and then one that's more dorsal or toward the top of the instrument. The lower portion of that blade is a cutting edge, cutting edge. And that's what you need to use against the root when you're root planing. And it's what you need to use at the base of the pocket and the lining of the pocket to do your subgingival curatage. And you do this fairly quickly with a firm but not too firm touch to both the root surface and to the tissue and you're literally lightly scraping those two surfaces with the cutting edge that you just visualized to remove that granulation tissue. You can aid in visualizing whether you've removed all that or not 
by using your air water syringe to clear the area and then looking at that with using the air from that air water syringe to kind of blow the gingiva back and look down into that pocket. And you can see this tissue as you remove it. It's not, it's not like it dissipates. It's a bleeding, inflamed tissue that will be removed as you do, uh, especially the, the subgingival curatage, <clears throat> and scrape that lining and scrape the base of that pocket. So you can actually see that coming out. You can see that you're doing good. This whole procedure takes maybe maybe a minute or so uh, to complete cleaning that pocket around that canine tooth. And then once that's clean, that five millimeter pocket now has a chance and a pretty good chance to actually reestablish itself and gain two to three millimeters of new attachment and become a two or three millimeter normal pocket. And that's our goal, because if we're back to that scenario, we're back to uh, essentially what we were at when we were at six months of age, when that tooth erupted or 10 months of age, when it completely erupted. And consequently, we've got a fairly normal scenario again, and we can start from square one. So the next time we come in, that pocket's not deeper at six months to a year when we clean again or whatever that interval is for the patient, it's back to a fairly normal relationship and it's not as deep as it was and it may or may not have granulation tissue in it again. So we always need to consider, even though we're treating these, that process doesn't, doesn't just quit automatically. It can happen again just like it happened originally. So we always want to check those pockets. And that's, that's what surprised me. I just didn't realize that a lot of general practices don't have that as common practice. So we need to incorporate that into our fee sheet. Again, closed root planing or CRP or closed root planing SC, subgingival curatage, however you want to do that as a charting abbreviation Charging for that, it's not a huge charge, but it is an additional treatment that has tremendous impact. So you want to have that as a separate charge. You also want to make sure that the whole staff is up to date on what that means. And this is basic, very basic, and it is not seen in a lot of practices. So, <clears throat> excuse me, when I have Patients come in on referral, and these patients have been cleaned every year, and they're a medium to small size breed, and it's at four, five, six years of age, and there's significant bone loss on a lot of these teeth. The reason is that we may be cleaning, and everything looks nice. The gingiva looks nice. The, the teeth look nice, with the exception of uh, maybe calculus, or maybe there's some mild gingivitis, but once they're clean, they look good. But under the gum, they're not. That granulation tissue from those pockets need to be removed. And consequently, this procedure is what gets you there. So dig out that periodontal curette that you have somewhere in the back of a drawer in your dental suite and send it to your dental hygienist or take it over there, let her or him make that a almost a new instrument or just buy a couple of periodontal curettes. They're super inexpensive. You can get those through our website at drbrettspets.com along with anything else that you need for the most part for your dentistry service. Uh, all those things are what we use. All of them are what we recommend. So drbrettspets.com is an easy way to get that action step going. <clears throat> no matter where you get it, you want to get one. Or you need to have an existing one sharpened and keep it sharp and use it every day. You'll find that you use it on every patient and exponentially more important to the patient than just cleaning and polishing. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope to see you next week where we do these every Wednesday morning. And they're for vets and techs and your dental suite to make it the best it can possibly be. So have a good week. We'll see you soon. Thanks for listening. I really hope you love that episode of the Vet Dental Show. Again, if you're a veterinarian and you want to be the best in dentistry and general practice that you can be, we've got something special for you at ivdi.org slash 2024 to be part of our class of 2024, one of 48 veterinarians to get into that class and you'll secure your spot early before the November 12th training that we have to make sure that you're in that group and make sure that you're off to the races as far as building your skills and your dentistry program in your hospital.